I want to know what kind of emergencies would you foresee? Like what, what have you seen in the past? What would yes. you have liked this emergency fund to pay for from previous experiences just to kind of give everyone an idea of what the difference is between emergency funds versus pulling from savings or using your spend? Great question. There has been, there's three times that I can think of offhand where this came up and all I think are perfect examples of, of when something like this happens. So the first is the girls, they fight. Oh my goodness. The mirror. They fight. The mirror. <laughs> How could the we mirror. forget the mirror? <laughs> That's right. The mirror. So they both had, Julie, they both had mirrors on the back of their, their door to their room, but now only one of them has a mirror on the back of her door. And that would be Grace. And that's because Eve and Grace were wrestling over their door, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The door slams, the mirror shatters. And I said, okay, who's going to pay for that? I sure didn't want to pay for that. And when we looked at what they had in their spend money, while well, their spend money was a little limited, so he said, okay, well, it's going to come from your emergency reserve. And they were able to pay for the replacement of that, which perfect, right? That's no different than your air conditioning breaking or my air conditioning breaking. You look at my checking account and saying, wait a minute, you know, I didn't realize that was going to be a, an $8,000 expense or 10,000 or this, or we have a flood or a hurricane or a tornado or whatever the case is. They experienced that, that exact same thing. This is exactly what I want to practice. Okay, good. All right. So that's one. The mirror. That's one. Next one is Eve and I were walking on Lincoln Road in a little outdoor pedestrian mall here. And she was about to go off with her, her friend. And she was calculating in her head and also looking in her wallet and like a debit card. And she was trying to think, oh, wait, oh, you know what? I'm about to go and spend time here with my friend, but I don't really have that much money. And she muttered to herself, but I heard it crystal clear. She said, Ooh, Good thing I have that emergency reserve. And I was like, yes. And that's exactly right. Because there are times when we dip into that, right? And it's great if we all have it. Like I said, half of Americans don't, but those that do, there are times where you can use it. It's not ideal to use it for a want instead of for a need, but it is there. It is a resource. It can be tapped into. And it turned out that she didn't use it. But the fact that she was thinking about it right, is exactly what I want. She knew, okay, I have a backup. I don't feel strapped for cash. I, I've made a plan that I feel better just going about my daily routine that I have that backup. I like that. You know, Cassidy loves to go shopping, as you know. And sometimes, you know, on the weekend, if she's bored and doesn't have plans, that's just a fun outing to do with a friend. So I'll say, hey, Saturday afternoon, you don't have any plans. You want me to drop you and a friend off at the mall? She goes, yeah, I would, except I don't have any money left. And I say, well, yeah, but you could still go shopping. It's still fun. No, it's not. It's not fun if you don't have money. Then it's just painful, you know, to have to look at all the things you don't have money for. <laughs> so I feel like if she had that emergency fund and she knew that somewhere back there she had $50 in case she finds something she wants, then she would be more apt to go and enjoy them all on a Saturday afternoon, even if she didn't have money in her wallet. So I like I like it for that um, option too, just to know it's there, but it's not in your spend. Right. So that was, that's number two. You know, with the credit bill, right? The credit bill is part of, again, the elementary starter course where kids aren't always carrying their wallet around. And so we have the credit bill on the fridge. And when they borrow money from the mommy, daddy, caregiver bank, when we're out, come back and we write that down on the fridge so that they can repay us come allowance day. Now, if they don't actually cover that expense, if they've overspent their credit bill, then they have to pay a penalty. In this case, $10 penalty. Well, one time, Grace did actually overspend, right? And she said, wait a minute, I have my emergency reserve. So she paid out of that and she avoided a $10 penalty. Again, feeling the, just that gratitude that she had, that sense of gratitude, like, oh, I have this, this safety net that I hadn't planned on, but it just saved me $10, right? Which is real life. Yeah. What a great real life moment. Cause I've definitely been in that situation before where it's like, oh my gosh, I have a bill due. It's $1,500. I only have 1200 in the bank. What am I going to, I don't want to pay the late. 
and yeah, pulling it out of that emergency and knowing, okay, I've got that 300, I've got to add back in there by next month. We're good. I think that's a really great thing for an eighth grader to start learning about or ninth grader. Yeah, ninth grade. And and what I love is that she did it, it worked, she practiced it. And now she's only been contemplating using it since. She hasn't actually dipped into it, which is exactly what I want. That's the lesson, yeah, the right? Goal. Is the goal, just to have them think about it, know it's there. Yeah. Okay. Just from your examples, I can see how that would work for both of my kids. Okay. So I'd like to know, you know, how you got it started. I know you touched on it a little bit at the beginning of this conversation, but I'm just kind of thinking like realistically how I would introduce this. I'd have the conversation and give the examples of what an emergency fund is there for. I I kind of am thinking maybe I would even help with a little bit of seed money for that fifth bucket, just so it's not all of a sudden like, here, you have this resource and now it has to go into five buckets instead of four that I feel like that might set off kind of a bad tone or a little bit of anxiety. They already feel this budget strap. Is that a good idea, do you think, to to like start them with a little bit of money and then give them some goals and some strategic steps forward? So you know I'm a big proponent of you have to do whatever works in your house. Whatever you're right. doing that you can stick with, that's the best way. Right. I found given their cash flow, their spending, their income, this worked in this way. I think that it is important that they have some stake in the game. So if you say, hey guys, here's the plan. You're each gonna have, let's just say $60 because that makes it easy and they're both in in middle school. So $60 and what I want you to do is I want you to fund it over the course of the next three months, but whatever you put in, I'm gonna match. So you're gonna put in 10, I'm gonna put in 10. Then the next month, you 10, I 10. You know, something like that. So they see you matching it. It's joint participation. This is what it's for. And so they have buy-in into the process. I like it. Yeah, we haven't done any matching yet, which I think is a is a good educational component also. I think this will be the next added step. I like that a lot. And three months, you know, that gives us the summer, which I think is a good time also to start utilizing some new tools. I like it. Okay, so then show like tell us a little bit about core day. And can you just dive into that a little bit more of like how that looks in your house now when it comes to the five buckets? Yeah. So initially on during the, let's call it the phase in period, it was putting that bucket out and saying, okay, remember this is the goal and sort of re-explaining it, making sure that they understood what the purpose was and then watching them allocate me, reminding them, okay, this is the goal. You need to get Eve, you need to get to 30, Grace, you need to get to 40. So making sure they got there. Once they're there, I basically just remind them. So actually on the front where it says emergency reserve, I wrote the amount. So it says right on there now, again, Grace, $100. It says Grace, emergency reserve, $100. And Eve, emergency reserve, $30. And I just say, you didn't tap into this this month, did you? They say, no, okay, great. Let's make sure it's all there. It's all there, good. You know, Just reminding you, you have this, that's it. The whole conversation. Putting it in front of them, knowing that they have it there, giving them that reminder, you don't have to have a lot of conversation about it. They basically should know, but it's just that reminder. That's it. I like it. Yeah, I think as you're talking, I think the first time we introduce it, I might actually start talking about it just like in the car, you know, over the weekend or something like that to kind of start saying like, hey, you know, what would you use an emergency fund for? Have you ever found yourself in that situation where you really wished you had a backup or, you know, kind of start planting the seed? And then when we do the next core day, which I guess is, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, then we can really sit down and make that part of the conversation of like, what's the actual amount? What are the steps to get there? I think having that pre-conversation will be really important um, to just start them thinking about all the different ways an emergency fund could be useful, ways that we wouldn't use it. I mean, I can see John immediately going like, Right, saying, I'm hungry. I want a meatball sandwich. And I've got that envelope there. You know, <laughs> I think we're going to put it in an envelope that's like sealed. You know, it's like <laughs> not so easy. He just tends to just go, you know, he gets hungry. <laughs> There's Look, you money. can also put the stipulation on this saying the emergency reserve is for discussion purposes, meaning. Right. Don't that, touch that it without you, talking about it. Correct. You, yeah. you must come talk to us. It must be a conversation for you to tap into an approved reason. 
I don't know exactly what those reasons are yet, but we'll know it when we see them. And John Meatball Sub isn't one of them. Right. Meatball <laughs> Sub, yerba mates, like all the things that you run over to the grocery store for, not part of the emergency yeah. fund. And I um, think part of that pre-conversation, hugely useful, is to tell them, you just said yourself, you've been in that situation. If you can think of real examples where you were in that situation or you can relate to that situation where this would have been a good time for you to have that, how much more comfortable you would have been or whatever it is that you can draw on personal experience to tell them, I think is hugely useful. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely agreed. So you feel like it's working? This is something that you're going to keep on with and start sharing with parents more and more? Absolutely. A blog post is actually live about that already. And I really was excited to introduce you to it this way, you know, so we could really dive into it. And it is definitely going to be, I'm hoping by the end of the year, we really get to do the middle school starter course. And this would be that either the middle school starter course or it's the continuation for elementary starter. So middle school up and running course, if you will. But it's definitely going to be part of that because it is working, I think, amazingly well. It does exactly what it is we're trying to do. We're trying to teach them the behaviors around spend, save, invest, donate, borrow, like create good habits through practice. This is exactly doing that. And like I said, it's one of the key tenets of financial planning. How can I not want them to practice that? So yeah, definitely going to be talking about it a lot. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> 